Hey, welcome to the Trash Picture Show. Today I'm going to be looking at 2009's Terminator Salvation. A movie many believe to be the third best Terminator movie in the franchise. And I really can't argue because T3 and Genesis are crap. But, is this a good Terminator movie? Yes and no. And I'm going to give my reasons why. The good stuff. First off, this movie does something original. It does something that the other Terminator movies don't do. It sets it totally in the future war. Um, essentially, we see the aftermath of Judgment Day. We see what has happened to the human race. We see how the machines have evolved. And we get a glimpse into how John Connor has, has to get to the top of the ranks of the Resistance. Now, the cool element about this movie is the practical effects and some of the visual effects via CGI are still pretty good too but I think what really works is the animatronics and robotics that are featured in this movie you have T1s, you have T600, 700s and the T800 these are cool and of course they're done by Stan Winston Studios you can't go wrong this man created the greats Terminator, Predator, Alien Warriors and the Alien Queen this guy knew how to make creatures and in this movie him and John Rosengrant make some fantastic creatures. The Terminator designs have evolved to become uh, kind of reverse engineered. We get these more bulkier kind of rudimentary almost Neanderthal like Terminators that are uh, stalking the wasteland. Now it is cool that they use practical effects but there is some pretty cool CG effects with the likes of the HKs and some other machines. There are some stuff in it I don't like that they use CG for. For example the Harvester machine. It's a giant kind of transformer robot with motor bikes that are attached onto its legs to pursue resistance members. I thought that was stupid. I thought that was like something out of Transformers. That shit should have been left to Michael Bay. That said the effects and stunts are still pretty cool. You really do think it's a post-apocalyptic environment. Los Angeles is totaled. The resistance has to scurry around in different military kind of vehicles and stuff to survive. And the setting is rich, it's vibrant and it's different from the prior Terminator movies. Which all seem to have time travel elements. This one doesn't. Now, the cast. The cast is pretty solid. You have Christian Bale. You have Bryce Dallas Howard, you have Sam Worthington, and you have the late, sadly departed, Anton Yelchin. Um, now, I'm going to start off with, I think, the strongest member of the cast and work my way to the weakest. Anton Yelchin, as uh, Kyle Reese, I think was fantastic. At first I wasn't sure because I saw the trailer and I was like, what the hell? Why is this kid playing Kyle Reese? And then the more I thought about it, it was like... Yeah, Michael Bean in the first movie, he wasn't that bulky, he wasn't that rugged, he wasn't that tough. And he grew up in the post-apocalypse. He didn't have food, he didn't have a lot of resources. Anton Yelchin looks like he had to scavenge and survive. And he looks like he has had a hard time living in the wasteland. And he gives a really great performance as a likeable young Kyle Reese. Next up we have Bryce Dallas Howard. She's pretty cool. She's an element brought over from T3, which uh, essentially she replaces Claire Danes as Kate Brewster, John Connor's wife. And she is a very kind of cool, collected um, doctor and partner to John Connor. Any of his ideas or plans, he runs by Kate and he trusts her. And while she has a very limited screen time, she makes the most of it. And you feel that she does love and respect John Connor. Now, the next character, who I liked, even though he's not a great actor, but he's still likeable, Sam Worthington as Marcus Wright. Now, I'm going to give you a backstory on um, Marcus. And if you haven't watched the movie, I actually urge you to stop watching this video, go watch it, and then come back and tell me what you think. Essentially... Uh, Sam Worthington plays Marcus Wright, a uh, death row convict who wakes up and he is in the middle of 2018 uh, in Judgment Day and 
essentially he's a stranger he's us he's kind of like this outsider who has to get a perspective on what's happening we don't know what the deal is with this character all we know is he wants to meet John Connor and find out answers to why he's in this predicament we later find out that he's actually a human terminator hybrid now while this is a fresh idea cinematically the idea was actually brought up in a dark horse comic with a character called dudley and it does make an interesting idea of a human brain inside the terminator body and which will prevail machine or man sam worthington he's He's good, he has some fantastic delivery in some scenes, but he has crappy delivery in others. But that said, his character is still likeable and you do root for him. And he is essentially the viewer. He's he's essentially the person who who the viewer has to discover this world through. Last but not least, we have Christian Bale as John Connor. Now I don't know if he was the right choice for this movie. I think he had just done Batman Begins and The Dark Knight and he I think he had the momentum from this movie. Um he took it from the Batman movies and it translates John Connor is very aggressive. He's very kind of um he's very angry. He's very kind of he is very Batman like in this movie, which I think might kind of like take from us. You, you might have be like, why the hell is John Connor acting like Batman? And that thing was in the back of my head the whole time. It's like Christian Bale is essentially doing Batman again as John Connor. And I, I, I genuinely believe Mac G picked bale because he had such a high profile status at the time and because this terminator movie was the first terminator movie not to feature schwarzenegger i think the studio and both mac g were worried that because schwarzenegger wasn't involved this movie mightn't have as much pull as it should have so i do think that christian bale while he's not bad in this movie he was the wrong choice for uh the role of john connor there's some side characters which were pretty cool you had um moon bloodgood as blair williams this feisty kind of fighter pilot who um falls in love with marcus and she's not just there for window dressing or eye candy she's a cool character she's a very sarah connor-esque character um the cast is fairly solid. There's other characters. Michael Ironside. Helena Bonnet Carter turns up as uh, Serena Krogan, who was a scientist, and now Skynet takes on the guise of her. Um, cast wasn't bad. It wasn't great. I think there was just some poor choices. Now, what else goes against this movie? Well, this movie, it 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 it's hypocritical. It it. It wants to be connected to the prior movies, but it totally goes against continuity. For example, um, the resistance in the uh, nightmare sequences or flashback sequences from the early Terminator 1, Terminator 2 movies, they're rats, they're vermin, they're, they're on the cusp of extinction, they're scuttling around the, the feet of the machines in order to survive. In this, they're a fairly well-established military kind of unit, and there's... While there are small pockets of resistance, they have planes, they have tanks, they have helicopters. They're they're not they're not the kind of just about hanging on kind of human race we saw in the prior movies, and that kind of annoyed me. It was kind of like okay, so the humans aren't doing that bad. Now the movie is set uh, in uh, twenty eighteen, which is about ten years before. Those flashbacks or sequences are set in uh, 2028, but I, I still think that the human resistance shouldn't have been that well equipped and well established in this movie because it totally goes against um, continuity. Um, another thing is uh, in one of the scenes in the movie, uh, Marcus essentially wants to travel to Los Angeles. But he's going to go by night and Kyle Reese 
in the movie stops him and says, no, it's too dangerous because uh, the Terminators can pick you up on infrared. In the prior movies, Kyle Reese told Sarah Connor that the Resistance had to move around at night time in order to avoid the Terminators. So that's another thing that kind of pissed me off. Like, the movie wants to reference the other Terminator movies, but it totally pisses on the continuity that's always already been established. That said, it's it's still a fun movie. I think its major failing is it wants to keep the fans happy by referencing stuff from the past movies. Like, there, there's a bit where John Connor uses a ghetto blaster to attract the Terminator, and it's got You Could Be Mine from Terminator 2 on it. Or some of the lines like I'll be back and 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 like uh, a Terminator gets punched in the jaw and he just he, he shakes it off those stuff is cute that that stuff is is it's 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 cute it's nice it's referential but I think that the movie wanted to try and be its own thing but was too afraid to deviate too much um that said it's still fun it's still an enjoyable action movie and it's adds something new to the Terminator lore like the future the future war you get to see a different perspective on it Marcus Wright being the human Terminator hybrid that stuff is all cool I think it should have been a standalone it should have been a movie that didn't reference uh, the other Terminator movies especially three like that movie I think should have been scrapped from continuity because it barred the ending it was an unmitigated disaster now at the time there was a lot of merchandising coming out for uh, Terminator Salvation um, there was a game for uh, PS3 and Xbox and it was fun it was essentially a poor man's uh, Gears of War I played this with uh, my friend Emily and while it wasn't a great game, in two player it's fantastic. You uh, control John Connor and uh, Blair Williams. And you have to traverse uh, the nuclear wasteland of Los Angeles. And fight Terminators and different machines. It was fun. But if you want a good Terminator game, I would suggest either Skynet's Revenge for the PC. If you can emulate it. Or uh, Terminator 3 The Redemption. Which is a very cool, fun, kind of GTA-esque um terminator game but this this isn't bad and you can get it fairly cheap now so if you're looking for just a, a good multiplayer kind of shoot them gears of war poor man's gears of war terminator salvation can't go wrong um they also released a tie-in comic which is uh acts as a prequel and the art is pretty good but it 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 kind of it kind of deviates a bit much from the element of the movie it includes things like politics and racism and stuff which I have no problem with but like in, in the future you shouldn't really care what race or politics someone is like there's a part of it set in Israel which is pretty interesting but I don't think stuff like that would matter when you're being hunted by Terminators it's an alright comic the art isn't terrible it isn't great either but um yeah if you're looking for a good Terminator comic that's set in the future wars, I would recommend either Terminator The Burning Earth, which um, actually this was published by uh, Now Comics and it came out in the mid 80s and it was one of Alex Ross's uh, earliest works. The covers are uh, pretty cool and uh, yeah, pretty fun. Or else you can check out Terminator Rewired which was by Dark Horse Comics and has some pretty cool elements set in a future war as well. So all in all is Terminator Salvation a bad movie? No certainly not. Is it a good Terminator movie? No. I think people should just stick with Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 but if you're interested and you're a fan a hardcore fan of the series Salvation is the way to go. I think it should have been a standalone Terminator movie or a standalone science fiction movie. The cast is pretty solid. I think Bale was out of place and it just tries to be its own thing but references other stuff and fucks it up in the process. But 
it's still not a bad movie. If you're a Terminator fan, it's well worth a look. So, this has been the Trash Picture Show. My name is Martin. Like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll be back.